Wednesday. What is going on? Living Water, caregivers, students, leaders, everyone, uh, welcome. And I hope everyone is staying warm. I know that uh, it is absolutely frigid out there. We're, I know we're hardy Minnesotans. Um, but just remember how lucky you are to have a warm place to be, uh, as so many people in our community may not have uh, a safe place and a warm place to be this evening. So uh, continue prayers for those in our community and, and do whatever you can to help uh, as well. Well, we're kicking off uh, a second uh, topic or a second part of our new unit, which is the gift of God's love. And tonight we're going to talk about a little concept called LGLO, a.k.a. Love God, Love Others. You know, last week we talked about God's unconditional love, no strings attached, loves you just the way you are. And tonight we're going to dig into this uh, idea that God uh, shares that unconditional love and then we can respond back to God, that we can love God back and we can choose to love God back and be in a relationship with our Creator. And then we can also love others. Uh, so tonight we're going to dig into that. So let's uh, let's prepare our hearts and minds for our evening tonight, uh, for our music. And tonight we have some new music. One of our awesome high schoolers is going to be sharing a song with us. So please uh, listen to the words, sing along if you know it, and, uh, and, and just get into it. All right, y'all, let's get after it tonight. Stop with the striving, just start being. Stop with the reaching, just start breathing. No need to try to earn affection. Just listen, child, just listen. You have purpose, you have me.
All right, Living Water Crew, let's uh, kick into our message time. I want to remind you to grab your Bible right now. Uh, we're going to start off in Scripture tonight, as we do most Wednesday nights. And tonight's Scripture is Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Again, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And we're, uh, we're going to be looking through this lens of, of uh, LGLO, love God, love others. So I want you to hear these words in Matthew. He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Word of the Lord. So... We're talking about this idea of love God and love others. Now, last week, we focused on God's unconditional love, that God loves you no matter what. Nothing you can do to get in the way of that. Nothing you can do to um, break that love. God will always love you and always walk with you through the good, the bad, ups and downs. But what is our response to that love, right? It's not just a one-way street. We're just, we're just not walking around, give, give, me, give me all the love, God, give me all the love. No, it's a beautiful thing, and it's an amazing thing, and it, and, it, and it hits me right in the heart to think about God's unconditional love for us and for all people. But what can we do in response to that? And so, love God. The first part of LGLN is is about returning that love back to God. It's about being in relationship with your creator. And there are a lot of ways that you can do that, okay? And, and one of the most uh, significant ones is simply talk to God on a regular basis. Take some time, maybe time away from your usual routine, maybe time that you have quiet time. For me, sometimes I'll pull out my guitar and I'll be playing some music and I'll be talking to God or praying, or, or maybe I am putting my head down on the pillow at night. I just have a few minutes, five or 10 minutes where I'm just talking to God and sharing not only my life, what's going on, but also to say thanks. Thanks God for all that you provide. Thanks for what you are doing in my life and in the lives of those around me. I think that is an incredible way to connect with God and to love God, okay? And as you connect to God, as you share with God, as you um, acknowledge this incredible creator and, and get to walk with God, God sometimes shows up in places that you don't expect. Okay, maybe you're having a really tough day. Something happened. Something was was uh, uh, a struggle in in class. Maybe there was a an issue you had between you and a friend. Maybe um, out on the the soccer field, you know, you just didn't click today. Uh, maybe you lost someone really important in your life, a family member or a friend. There are a lot of things that go on in our life. Um, that we might need that extra uh, love, that extra support. And God is walking with all of us in the midst of that. So that's, that's the first part of this. Loving God is giving that love back. And there are a million ways for you to find connection with God and to give that love back to God. Maybe it's just saying, thanks, God. Thanks, God, for this, this warm home and this bed to, to lay my head, head down on. Maybe it's saying, thanks, God for all these amazing people in my life and the ability to, um, to help others. But here's the second part of it is loving others, L-O. And this can be the hardest part, right? Because we don't always track with everybody around us, right? Right, you know, there are people that you struggle with, there are people that Maybe you're uh, having conflict with, maybe it's a sibling in your own house. Maybe you're struggling with a parent, a caregiver, maybe a teacher, a coach. 
maybe it's another kid that just y'all don't jive. And so you're just always having issues getting along, okay? This idea of loving others doesn't stop at just the people that we like or are like us or the people that see things the same way. It goes so far beyond that, y'all, to the people that we don't track with, the people that you might call an enemy. It, it's the people that may have done something in the past to do you wrong or maybe did something recently that hurt your feelings or didn't make you feel very good. Finding a way to um, care for love, that's hard. That's hard to do with people that we don't always track with or with people that we don't have the same interests. But I wanna share a story of how powerful it can be to love others, especially those that we don't track with. I had the privilege of hearing um, Mary Johnson speak. She's a local uh, speaker and an advocate and leader in this uh, area. And I heard her speak and share her story and it was powerful. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna kind of go through and paraphrase a little bit what, what her story look, looks like. Uh, in 1993, Mary Johnson, her only son, he was, he's 20, he was 20 years old at the time, uh, named uh, Loramian Bird. And he was at a party and at this party, he got into an argument with a 16-year-old young man named O'Shea Israel. And it just so happened that it escalated. And O'Shea pulled out a gun and shot and killed Loramium. And that, for Mary Johnson, was in incredibly, not only difficult, but life-changing um, time for her. Horrible, painful. Now, O'Shea was convicted of second-degree murder and received a 25-year sentence. And as a result, Mary became so bitter and angry and frustrated. And that, that, that hate ran so deep that her son was taking from her, her only son. And she remained angry for a lot of years. And it ended up driving people away. Um, until one day, she read a poem. And this poem was, was a poem by two moms. Uh, one who had a child that had died from, um, who had been murdered, and a, another mom whose son murdered somebody had written a poem. It was through the words of this poem that suddenly Mary had uh, an epiphany, a vision. Um, she had an idea of creating an organization to support not only the moms of murdered children, but also the moms of children who have committed murder. And so to begin this journey, she knew that there was one obstacle. Um, in her way before she could truly begin to do that work and do that healing. And that she would need to go into the prison where O'Shea was and um, forgive him. And so that is exactly what she did. Um, she put in a request to the Department of Corrections to meet with him and she did meet with him and she forgave him for what he did and started a a relationship, a friendship with him. And that relationship was transformative for her. That changed both of their lives, that gave her the courage to move forward. And so that story that she shared, um, that I got to hear, uh, was so powerful, such a powerful witness and, and of unconditional love, a story that shows that loving others can change us from the inside out. Sometimes we think that, oh, what I'm doing by loving others, I'm really helping you. If I go and maybe I go serve and I help this person, that that's, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm doing something over there that's, that's powerful, that's going to change that person's life. But really, 
That, and then it's a great, it's a kind act we should always serve and continue to help our brothers and sisters in Christ, in this community and beyond, always. But what's so important is to know what transformation comes when we love others from our inside, that God loves us unconditionally. We share that love with God. And then we take that love that's inside our heart that we have received and we love others. And I'm going to put a disclaimer here. There are a lot of situations where sometimes um, relationships stop because of, of trauma, stress, abuse. And so um, finding ways to forgive without having an uh, in, in contact, in person relationship um, is, is, is best. But I want to tell you that if, if there's somebody that you're struggling with, there are people in your life, um, friend at school, you've fallen out with, that you have an opportunity to find a way to, to show love for or um, to share that love that you've received, maybe even just a, a small bit of kindness, caring or acceptance. That's something God's calling us to, to work on and try. It's gonna make this world a better place. It's gonna make this community a better place. When we begin to love others, um, especially those that are harder to love. This week, we're all on a journey together and this isn't all cut and dry. It's not black and white and it's not easy. And so it takes courage, it takes work, it takes leaning in sometimes. Sometimes it takes a long time, right? It took years for, for Mary to get the courage to figure out I needed, she needed to do this, that she said to herself, I need to forgive. But for you this week, I want you to try a couple of simple little experiments. I want you to take some time. First of all, the love God part, I want you to take some time to talk to God this week. Find a, a regular time each day and just say to God, hey God, you know, it doesn't have to be a fancy prayer. It doesn't have to be something um, that's, you know, perfect and theologically sound. It, it's just a conversation with God. It's just saying, what's up, God? I want to share my day. I'm going to share the high, the low. Here's a struggle. Here's something I'm trying to achieve. Here's something that I could use your help walking with me on. It's just taking time to talk to God. So that's the first thing I'm going to ask you to do this week is find five minutes every day just to say what up, God, okay? Two, I know that, that um, sharing God's love, that agape love, that unconditional love that we see um, – that we receive and that we want to share, I want you to figure out one way that you can, this week, share God's unconditional love with someone else. Um, and maybe that's somebody who, maybe it's somebody you don't know, it's a stranger, but you, you've seen needs a little something, a little love, a little care. And when I say that, I mean maybe just walking down the hall and smiling because this person has, is, is struggling or having a hard time. Maybe that's giving a sibling a break or a parent a break and not pushing so hard. Um, I, I don't know what that is for you, but I want us to take this week and think about how can we share God's love with someone else and, and do that in a way that, um, that connects the love that we have received to care about somebody else in our, in our life, okay? That's what I want you to think about. And I want you to think about that and take time um, reflecting on after you have maybe smiled at that person or um, tried to kind of reconnect with a friend that you hadn't been connecting with. I want you to take time just to share that with God, okay? Let God know. Um, and maybe if you feel comfortable to share that with a caregiver or somebody that you trust, okay? That is, my friends, um, that's our work. Love God, love others. It's powerful. It changes, changes lives. Simple little things. It doesn't have to be the hugest thing in the world. Small, random acts of kindness and care. L-G-L-O. Live it. Amen. All right, well, L-G-L-O, y'all got that. Got the, a little bit of an assignment today, this week. Uh, and that this question, 
How do we respond to God's unconditional love for us? You got your marching orders. You got your, your, uh, your activity for the week, what to do, your challenge. Um, I want you guys, as we begin to uh, get into these small groups tonight, maybe start that process of talking about love God, love others, and what that looks like. Maybe share an idea of how you might do that with your small group. Again, these are trusted conversations, so y'all keep them uh, keep them real and keep them confidential. But maybe have that conversation how you might do that in this uh, in this uh, assignment or challenge for the week. Um, and here's one way that you all can absolutely love others. You know, each month, if you look at your um, Living Water uh, information guide that has all of the lessons. Each month, there is a suggestion for your small group to do a service project. And this week, we are asking, or this month, excuse me, of February, we're asking each small group to do a little uh, a, a warm, uh, warm up, help others that are struggling with homelessness in this cold. It's cold out, y'all. There are people who do not have um, hats and mittens. Um, they don't have the proper socks. So what we're asking you to do is coll- collect gloves, hats, um, and socks, both kid sizes and adults, as a small group. Collect them somehow safely, again, safely, COVID, safe, uh, and then drop that off. And if it's possible for you to take a social distanced um, picture, and again, this is you got a month to do the project, the whole month of February, um, if you could take a picture of your small group with the bags of gloves and then turn them in, send me an email with that picture and a heads up that you turned in the hats, the mittens, the socks, um, and and turn that into the church office, you know, the welcome desk there with my name on it. And we're going to get those to community organizations that have folks struggling with homelessness who need warm clothing this time of year. It's an incredible way to live this out, y'all. One, one way, one way. And y'all can do you know, many different things, but this is one way I'm going to ask you to do. Um, share this with the other uh, group leaders, um, and you know, let's see how, how much we can put together. How many um, sets of gloves, hats, and socks? Let's do this, y'all. Uh, if you have questions, email me, text me, ask me any questions that you have. Um, but let's do this in the month of February. And let's get this out to people that could use that warmth. All right? This week, okay, as you do your thing, as you journey, know that we see you, we hear you, and you matter. All right, y'all. Peace out.